Good evening to you ladies and gentlemen. We thank you for joining us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Tonight, the President of the Republic of Cameroon ignores internal problems plaguing the country and focuses on international crisis as he was addressing national dignitaries and members of the diplomatic corps at the Unity Palace today. We shall be telling you about the ceremony that was aimed at presenting New Year wishes to the President of the Republic of Cameroon in this newscast. We take you to Kongsamba of the Mongo Division where there is rising insecurity as Immaculate Foge will be telling us in just a moment. We shall be right back. Good evening to you once again, ladies and gentlemen. We thank you so much for joining us. We begin right away in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, to talk about the President of the Republic of Cameroon who received New Year wishes from members of the Diplomatic Corps and National Dignitaries so that was today and he said nothing about the crisis plaguing the two Anglophone regions of the country. He was uh, receiving New Year wishes in the nation's capital Yaoundé today. He rather met an overview of happenings around the world before highlighting Cameroon's external trade, diplomatic and cooperation policies. Babla Jonathan tells us more in the following report. Force est de constater que l'instabilité qui continue de caractériser les relations internationales. Cameroon's head of state, Paul Beer, focuses his speech to members of the diplomatic corps on crises far away from the one hitting two regions of his country. He said battles in Syria and Iraq are now sporadic, but that the destiny of the Middle East will remain uncertain if the two powers do not find a point of understanding. Concerning the Israeli-Palestinian conflict, President Paul Beer highlighted dominant and conflicting interests of some world superpowers as a factor that maintains the zone in troubled waters that could last for an undetermined period of time. L'État islamique a activé ses cellules djihadistes au nord de l'Afrique et dans la bande sahélienne. According to Paul Beer, Islamic State group affiliated terrorist groups in North Africa and the Sahel Zone, though defeated militarily, still have the capacity to destabilize many African countries. One of such groups is Boko Haram, which President Paul Beer sees has been kicked out of Cameroon, but there is need for her and other countries of the Lake Chad Basin to keep watch over their borders. Qui nous oblige cependant à rester très vigilants. President Paul Beer also talked about climate change, illegal immigration, nationalistic tendencies, and what he calls trade war between states. Pour un pays comme le Cameroun, exportateur de matières premières, dont les cours sont fixés sur les marchés étrangers, for a country like Cameroon, exporter of primary products whose prices are determined on the foreign market, it would be indispensable, as I have always said, to reduce her dependency to develop the industrial sector, to reduce import, to stimulate trade exchange, which remains largely insufficient within regional blocks and canvas for new markets and the rest of the world. Au sein des ensembles régionaux et de prospecter de nouveaux marchés dans le reste du monde. However, President Paul Beer voiced Cameroon's determination to pursue her development drive with the aid of partners, including the European Union. Nous poursuivrons une politique active de coopération économique Avec la Chine, China, Japan, Korea Republic, and all other countries who want to establish mutually profitable cooperation ties with his country. Ainsi qu'avec tout pays désireux de nouer avec nous une coopération mutuellement bénéfique. Par ailleurs, nous avons, comme par le passé, 
Another side of his speech projected Cameroon's smooth ties with the African Union and her contribution to effort get towards ensuring the institution's financial autonomy and regional integration. Et de garantir son autonomie financière. Va-t-on voir le monde nouveau qu'on nous annonce faire fausse route et revenir à des divisions et des querelles dans notre temps? The head of state also decried what he called division and quarrels of another era that could thwart the new world of science and technology to come. Vive la coopération internationale. And the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps, who is Gabonese Ambassador to Cameroon, however, presented the socio-political and economic situation of the country, Mr. Paul Patrick, before praised government's efforts in addressing the socio-political crisis in the northwest and the southwest regions of the country, but admitted that more still needs to be done. Let's hear him in this excerpt. Your Excellency, for Cameroon 2018, has certainly been a year of multiple challenges. However, we are convinced of your determination to take forward your vision of emerging Cameroon by 2035. Your renewed mandate at the helm of this country has given you all the option for setting the agenda to achieve this and to offer the country a bright and peaceful future. National unity and cohesion will be key for emerging Cameroon. The diplomatic corps, therefore, counts on your wisdom and commitment to offer a peaceful and lasting solution to the current crisis in the Northwest and Southwest regions of the country. Open and inclusive dialogue, a dedicated role of civil society, and the implementation of the recommendation of National Commission for the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism will be, in our view, important element of such a process. As in the past, we stand ready to accompany your country in the effort to achieve lasting stability and peace and to support the reforms you may wish to implement in favor of women, youth, and the most vulnerable people in society. But also the important process of decentralization for which we are pleased for the setting up of the necessary means for acceleration of this process. We, Mr. President, also take this opportunity to apply for improved access of humanitarian actors to the Northwest and Southwest regions, which are willing to operate in exercising their particular mandate. We also welcome your recent and most significant initiative that aim at building confidence in favor of the lasting and non-violent solution of this crisis that already has caused too many victims. More need to be done. And as said before, we stand ready to accompany Cameroon on this path. That is the Dean of the Diplomatic Corps there speaking during the ceremony to present New Year wishes to the President of the Republic of Cameroon that was in Yaoundé today. Now, the rate of insecurity in Cartier Wit neighborhood that is in Kongsamba of the Mongo Division of Cameroon is on a steady rise and local inhabitants are worried about the situation. Inhabitants say that the absence of electricity has transformed the area into a hideout for hoodlums. Immaculate Fogwe has the details in this report. Inhabitants of the Kate Wit neighborhood in Kongsamba are living in fear and uncertainty as a result of the persistent robbery attacks on individuals, traders, and business enterprises. The rate of insecurity in the town heightens each passing day 
and inhabitants' property are at risk of banditry attacks. These people say the blackout in their locality provides an opportunity for bandits to effectively carry out their plans. These abandoned vehicles are also used as a hideout by the bandits. A trader in Kongsamba expresses her plight. Any day bandit, they come. Every day, thieves come to our place and steal one thing or the other. People are suffering here a lot. Sometimes you expose your goods the whole day, but no one comes and buy them. It is just thieves who come and carry them away at night. Another trader seriously affected by these consistent banditry attacks explains. For doctors, yeah. There's no way for us to go to the hospital at night. The road leading there has been taken hostage by youths who smoke Indian herb, commonly called marijuana. These inhabitants hope that their cry could be heard and security measures put in place by authorities so calm and tranquility could be enjoyed in neighborhood and the town of Kongsamba in general. And here in the economic capital, Douala, we continue to talk about rising insecurity. At least 700,000 francs CFA that has been stolen following an armed robbery attack that took place this morning at the protestant hospital city sick neighborhood that is here in the economic capital Douala, precisely in the Douala 5 subdivision it should be noted that personnel of the set health establishment were taken at gunpoint or they were held at gunpoint during the set operation details with smanji kan gabriel it was with this makeshift ladder that the three men of the underworld found their way into the protestant hospital premises at Ndogbati, 3.30 a.m. Wednesday. Immediately they gained access into the hospital, they went into the office of the cardiologist where they scattered the entire office hoping to get money, which they didn't find. Several other doors were destroyed in their quest to get money by all costs. Among the doors destroyed was that belonging to the accountant of the hospital where the thieves made away with the sum of 700,000 francs CFA and they also went into the pharmacy where some drugs were also destroyed. According to the head of the hospital, the doctor on guards saw his laptop taken away from him and all of the mobile accounts of the infirmarians on call were also emptied by the thieves. Even though the doctors and infirmarians were not hurt, all were tied and kept at gunpoint while the thieves went around the hospital to carry out their arts. The incident has been reported to security officials who have now opened the investigation to track down the three thieves who visited the hospital. Meanwhile, activities at the protestant hospital in Dogbati resumed normally after the incident Wednesday. And the governor of the center region of Cameroon, Nasser Paul Bia, has expressed satisfaction on the ongoing construction works at the Omi Sports Stadium in the nation's capital. He was speaking after an inspection visit today, during which the project manager said that for a few weeks ahead, uh, works on pitches would commence after the completion of other projects. Details with Innocent Aze. Construction works at the Olympic Stadium and the next stadium in Yaoundi have accelerated over time when the sites were last visited over a month ago by the central governor Nasiri Paul Bia and other sport officials. We noticed that they have finished with the roofing. They are putting on the lighting system. The cheers when we came here last time, it was not a number. You have seen that here now they have put the star and the lion's head. And so the chairs, most, almost all the chairs are, have been placed. We have uh, the elevators, they are going to be 12. And uh, we have seen already those in the public place, meant for people who are handicapped, who cannot come to this. In the other, our next stadium, you realize that uh, the field is already good. I'm driving program in March. 
and the roofing is going to be done within 10 days. Though Governor Nasiri Paul Bia noted economic challenges slow the construction works, the project manager indicated they will on their part strive to get work still completion. You know, now we, we, we completed now a lot of uh, trades in the, in the main stadium, uh, particularly the, the roofing is, is now completely uh, uh, completed and, uh, and we removed the big crane which was uh, taking all the place on the on the, the pitch and now we remove it completely she's now in Douala so it's not more on site the controller of the pitch new group Benoit Farm noted that pitch works will soon begin after all other works are terminated we'll be able to to start now the pitch in the um, with the coming weeks and complete it and we will do the, the pitch relatively quickly because all the material needed to, to complete it are, are already on site uh, and in, in the building itself we are now uh, finalizing the, all the cabling and uh, the false selling and after we complete the cabling and the false selling it remains only the, the device to install electrical device and uh, mechanical devices Access roads into the field, according to central governor, shall be constructed with ease and without reclamation troubles from occupants who have been affected. We just paid the, the villagers their dues about two weeks ago. We know that there are always reclamation, which we are going to look into. But the checks were paid two weeks ago, and this problem is no longer a major problem preoccupation. It was ascertained by CAV. Cameroon will host AFCON 2021 and the head of state in his end of year speech reiterated construction works will proceed in various stages such that Cameroon hosts the next African football tournament. And that brings us to the end of this first segment of the news. Time for us to meet our guests tonight. We shall be right back. Stay with us. Good evening to you once again, ladies and gentlemen. The year 2018 was a remarkable one, especially given that it was an electoral year. The political sphere would equally be a busy one this 2019 with the municipal and legislative elections slated in the months ahead. One of those who stood out, though boycotting the 2018 presidential election in the country, was Edith Kabangwala, who is president of the Cameroon People's Party. Madam, good evening to you. Thank you so much for joining us tonight on Talking Point. Good evening. It's a pleasure to be here. A very, very happy new year to each and every Cameroonian. I want to say happy new year, especially to our brothers and sisters in the extreme north, in the north, the Adamawa and the east, because our attention has been focused very much on what is happening in the northwest and southwest. Uh, these regions are also suffering very, very, very uh, severe um, violence and uh, I want to send them strength and energy for 2019. I think all of us together, all 10 regions of Cameroon, we are ready for change and 2019 is a very good year for change. When talking about change, we saw how you were very uh, bent on not taking part in the presidential election in 2018. Would it be a similar scenario this 2019 with the municipal and legislative elections coming up? Well, we did not take part in the 2018 elections for two reasons. One, it is inconceivable for us at the level of the Cameroon People's Party that we are together in a country, all of us are citizens with the same rights, the same obligations. Now, if you are being shot at, your village is being burnt, you are running for your dear life, and I, I want to carry on business as usual. Then I want to talk to you about national unity. I want to talk to you about the country remaining together. What type of a conversation is that? So the number one reason, one, the, the, one of the key reasons we did not go for elections was the conflict in the Northwest and the Southwest regions. The second reason was the electoral system and the fact that this system is under capture it has totally been hijacked by one party imagine 
we are going to go, Cameroon is going to go and play. We, were, we missed hosting it, but we are going to go and play in the African Nations Cup in a few months. Imagine that we are going to play against Côte d'Ivoire in a tournament against Côte d'Ivoire. Côte d'Ivoire, when we ask who has selected the referees, it is Côte d'Ivoire. When we ask who is selling the tickets to enter the stadium, it is Côte d'Ivoire. When we ask who are the linesmen, who are the judges of the match, it is Côte d'Ivoire. Will any Cameroonian accept for Cameroon to play that match? So the electoral system is being controlled entirely by the CPD. Meaning that it is which, not independent which, and it cannot which be has, transparent. Which has, yeah, it's, I mean, I think Cameroonians lived it. I don't think they need me to, to tell them. We lived it live on television. We saw that this system has completely been hijacked by one party. So the question is not to the Cameroon People's Party. The question is to every other party who wants to go for elections. And that question is, what has changed? Between October last year and whatever time the elections will be taking place, what has changed? Are we, as Cameroonians, trying to say we are going to accept that they should be voting for a, ma a, a mayor in Edea while Manfe is unable to vote? Are you changing your stance with the current state of affairs, like you're saying, looking at the electoral code, which to you is not uh, is is not the way you it's want. It's not. It's not to me. And that I think I think to we the need Cameroon People's Party I and think, Cameroonians, no, like you've said. Yes, Cameroonians. Are you going to maintain your stance with the upcoming municipal and legislative elections? Like I said, the question would be to you and to every other person: Why would we not maintain our stance? Are we illogical to say one thing today and start saying something else tomorrow? And we, we, we must ask my question to anybody who wants to participate in these elections. Last time, as you know, we were very reserved. We, we had our opinion, we made it clear, but we did not uh, uh, get into the, 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 the fray to fight and say, no, don't go to elections and so on. But this time, we will be asking questions to anybody who is telling Cameroonians to go for elections. You cannot have gone through what we saw at that constitutional court. Every single candidate leaving that court told us that this is scandalous, it is an electoral holdup, it is, uh, they had all manner of ways to describe it. Apart from now, if those is. very people are asking us to go to elections, uh, then they must be taking Cameroonians for fools. Apart from this problem with the electoral code in Cameroon and the entire electoral process, yes. which to you or the CPP or some Cameroonians is marred by irregularities, uh, fraud, like you've noted earlier, are you still preoccupied about the situation in the north and the south regions of Cameroon of with regards to upcoming elections? Of course. Of course. Look at what happened last year. It is between September and October that the number of internally displaced tripled in the country. We, before uh, 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 September, we were talking about maybe about 250,000 displ uh, uh, displaced persons. We saw a mass exodus out of that region in the month of September, tripling the number of people who were uh, uh, internally displaced. Every indication that we have is that if you want to go to elections in a few months from now, we would not have resolved this situation. And our cry has always been to the rest of the actors, be they civil society actors, be they church actors, be they political actors, because at this point in time, all the actors have got to come together. And our cry with the Anglophone crisis has been to all the actors, let us put a condition to government. Let us tell government, if you want us to go to elections, you must first give us a process by which we are getting out but of the, the government Anglophone would say crisis. that they have been carrying out series of measures to resolve the Anglophone crisis. We heard the dean of the diplomatic corps speaking in Yaoundé, mm -hmm. who is Gabonese ambassador to Cameroon, indicating, praising the government of Cameroon that even though much still needs to be done, the government has been able to release some 289 detainees of the Anglophone crisis 
uh, citing the creation of the Disarmament Committee and the National Commission on the Promotion of Bilingualism and Multiculturalism. Do you think these uh, measures taken by the government has been enough to solve this crisis? Because up to now, the situation is still very, very preoccupying, like you said. The, the way you measure whether you are getting out of a crisis is, are the people who are living in that region, are they safe? Can they move from their homes to their job to any other activity they want to carry out in safety? The answer in the Northwest and Southwest regions is no, a resounding no. How is their economy? Is the, are they able to go about their business? Are they able to go to their farms? Are they able to go and do their trade work and feed their families? The answer is a resounding no. Are people dying? The answer is a resounding yes. Are people being killed? Yes. Are they being mutilated? Yes. So what solution do we have? The, the, the problem, and that is where we are calling upon Cameroonians, because this government has um, continuously played a game, releasing 289 people. OK, you are releasing 289 people. The question is, how many people have you arrested? Why should we accept that a state arrest is a legal process? You don't arrest a, 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 a citizen without going through a legal process. Why should we accept that a state will be arresting people and they don't even know how many people they have arrested? They should give us the numbers. We have arrested this number of people. We are holding this number of people for this type of charge so that we know what that 289 represents right now talking about neither the you nor i can it's tell. a very very important point because the logic was that those that were arrested and detained could come out and help uh, put an end to the crisis and call on the weapon holders to drop their arms which we are yet to see we that are yet to see are yet to see politicians like you are yet to see and tomorrow in yaoundé some of the leaders will be appearing in court it has been going on for several months now. They were arrested and detained exactly one year ago. As a politician, what would you say to the government of Cameroon as they are appearing in court tomorrow? Well, I think that for a government that wants to take a step forward with this crisis, the leaders who will be in court tomorrow present to them an, a real opportunity. Because you know, we have to make sure that we distinguish between your political opinion and the law. I am not of the same political opinion as the leaders for the independence movement who will be on, in court tomorrow. That does not mean that you should uh, um, violate the law when you are dealing with them. These leaders were as by all means we can tell, kidnapped from Nigeria because there's no extradition treaty between Nigeria and Cameroon. Cameroon. We do not know how. I, I read a few days ago from somebody who was with them and who got left behind in Nigeria because she has Nigerian citizen. I read for the first time an account of what happened. And when you read that account, it is kidnapping. Nothing short of that. The, the, there was violation of Nigerian law, there was violation of Cameroonian law, there was violation of international law upon arrest. Now, by law in any process, when you violate the law on arrest, you must release. That's, that's the law. It's not a, a, an opinion. Secondly, now, these people were brought to Cameroon and were kept for months with no access to lawyers, and no to their access families. to their families. Tell us what Again, impact eh, 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 they are eh, illegal. So tomorrow, if the government of Cameroon wanted to uh, um, have an impact on this Anglophone uh, crisis, tomorrow they would make some gesture, some very strong gesture, ideally the release of these people, and you can pursue them if you feel they have violated Cameroonian law. Pursue them according to the legal process, but you would release them to, uh, uh, as a gesture to those who are following them behind. Number two, what you would do in case, because release, I, knowing the Cameroonian government, I am not, I would be the first shocked 
person to see You're them. Quite pessimistic. It, yes, I'm very very pessimistic with regard to 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 release. However, what they could do tomorrow is actually charge these people and begin the legal process and begin to because we have kept people for a year. But without their charges have been right with, already. With, 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 without already beginning the trial is what I mean. It's so so that you speed up the process so that you are actually you know you are keeping people for one year and nothing has happened basically speaking so it means that you have taken their liberty for one year without giving without any justification so it is very very important tomorrow that um i i i, I unfortunately i was planning to be in court tomorrow unfortunately i will not be able to due to an emergency but it is very very important that the government of cameroon use this opportunity to make a gesture final thing i would say before we go just the, briefly, yes because time it, for the for prisoners the easiest one because the those who are coming on trial tomorrow are really the leaders of the independence movement they are a difficult group for this government but we have people who were arrested prior to anybody taking up arms prior to any violence that is the bbc manchos terence pence galim felix and the others these people were non-violent the movement was not violent at the time when they were arrested so their case should they, also be looked in so their case these are these people should be easy for release Releasing these people would bring down the tension and would enable us to be able Thank to talk. Thank you so much, Madam Edith Kawala, for joining us tonight on Talking Point. We hope to have it some other time again. Thank you very much. And uh, as I have said, Happy C New Year to every Certainly we'll Cameroonian. Certainly talking about the impact and how it has so far affected the CDC. Thank you so much for yes, joining us. Yes, yes. Economic so, uh, impact. Was, it was equally a pleasure having us in this edition of the 6 p.m. primetime newscast on Equinox Television. Wishing you a blessed stay in the company of our programs. Until we meet again, goodbye.